Lincoln. Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM. You can follow us online at WLCNOnline.com. Download that Mixler app, Jake. You can listen to everything we do live. Uh, I've got you it. Know. You got it? I've got it. Joe, you got it? I got it. All right. Uh, Mixler. Mixler. It's a great Download name, too. And Mixler. Can, we're on Twitter at WLCN Sports. Scott Kirby, Jake Johnston, Joe Ryan, Lloyd Kirby, and Jim Ash with you this morning at the Jakes. What we got going on here today, Jake? Uh, you were talking about some uh, some special pricing on your vignette items. Oh, the yeah. vignette. Did you see the vignette? I love the vignette. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> how do you sit on one of those couches if I want to test that couch? It's right there. It's yeah, right but how there. do I you climb up there? Below it. Oh, you, you just one, climb up you there. Three. I'm showing off colors going vertical. Oh, so, so I want to test the white one, how comfortable it was. Jake, you got you got some special <laughs> pricing. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've uh, kind of went a different way with our accessory pieces. So Ashley Furniture has dove deep into accessory pieces like clocks, uh, wall paintings, mirrors, um, this, that, whatnots, you know. Uh, vases and that kind of thing. They went real deep into it, so I wanted to bring it in and see how it looked. I brought it in uh, and kept thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going out of town and I'm stopping at Hobby Lobby and seeing what their prices are, and you know, they're always having 50% off. I'm going to Gordman's and seeing what their <laughs> prices are, and they're having 50% 70% off. 70% sometimes. So you know what? I just dropped my price down to basically match their price with their 50% off. And that's what our price is going to be every day. That's going to be on rugs, lamps, all of it. So all every the accessory day. pieces. It's every not day. just an inventory reduction. So. No. Well, we're we're always uh, looking to have an inventory <laughs> reduction. Reduction. reduction of the inventory. Yes. As I add to oh. it. But yes, yes. no. I, you every know, day. It, it's one of those things that uh, really. My thought is the accessories don't take up space. They're they're hanging on the walls. They're sitting on tables. The tables are what taking up space. The sofas are what's taking up space. So I want you to make your house look better. And if I can make it more affordable for you to do it, that's what I'm going to do. That's and you don't I'm need at. to mislead us by having some sign that says 50 percent off. Huh? But yeah. it's marked up 400 yeah. <laughs> percent. Well, and, you know, and that, well, that's the thing. It, it's always a I'm game. There, there's always a markup to mark down whenever you're having big sales like that. It's the only way they can do it. Well, that takes a lot of time and effort, and I'm not into that. So I'm just well, going to market oh, cheap and obviously. sell it. <laughs> he did tell me before we went online that he's not even making any money on that stuff. So that that's that true. is not true. I am a much for profit organization. Yes, we know that. Oh, all right. Yes, I'm going to make money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I long as no he can sell about, something, I make no bones about it. I'll tell every customer who comes in here, I'm going to make oh, you, money. You I'm in business to make money. Away? No, I'm not. I'm not giving none oh, away. Well, <laughs> I'm in it. I'm in it to that's win. That's not what we talk. <laughs> However. About. I am I am here to give you the best price. You might be the first honest furniture guy I've met. Well, guys, hey, you. let's let's get, to, uh, let's get to let's get to our <laughs> guest today. He's got things to do today. The sun is shining. Uh, he wants to get outside, get his kids out, uh, get out of the gym, get That's outside, right. and do some work. We got Coach Smaney on with us this morning. Good morning, Coach. Morning. Good to be morning, here. Morning, Coach. Coach, uh, this year what? Third, second, second year, yep. second year uh, at the Raylor baseball program at the high school. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your team, uh, some returning kids. Uh, you know, how'd you end last year? I don't think we got to talk to you at the end of the year last mm -hmm. year. Uh, you know, and then who's returning and, you know, some of the kids on your team right now. Yeah, last year ended in a, a disappointing but kind of proud finish, you know, the regional championship. Uh, lost one nothing, bottom the seventh, walk off home run. Um, oh, so, I mean. That hurts. Yeah, it was, it was a battle. The kids played great, no errors. It was just... It was a game, you know, no, you couldn't ask for anything more besides, you know, coming out with a, a run and pulling the win off. Um, so we ended on... Was that Chatham? Yeah, against yeah, Chatham. So and Chatham. Detmers, Ooh. you know, was a great pitcher. Oh, yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah. he was dealing, yeah. and we had Austin Newton going against him, and they were just head-to-head -head battle, um, pitching battle. Um, so coming back, we lost quite a few seniors. Um, so we have some young guys coming back, um, just a few seniors this year. Uh, but we're going to be young, um, so we're just really trying to be aggressive, young, try to build that up. So what what did you take out of the first year uh, as far as experience that you're going to carry over? Because obviously each year in, year out, there's you know yeah. you find different stuff that you need to you know work on to make yourself a better coach. Mm -hmm. What did you take from last year that you're going to kind of try to implement this year? Yeah, uh, we worked on hitting every day last year. Um, in the last 
few years I've been here, we just haven't been a big hitting program. So we won several games by small ball. You know, we beat Sacred Heart with safety squeezes. And that's uh, a big win. You yeah, that was Heart. a big win. Um, but, you know, so I had to manufacture runs. Um, like I said, we work on hitting every day. But I'm going to extend it. You know, we're going to hit for at least an hour a day. It might extend our practices, but, um, you know, the kids got to buy into working on the tees because even the pros are hitting tees every yeah. day. Um, and so trying to get the kids to understand to focus on the fundamentals, like going through the motions is what I'm really harping on them. And so it's been, it's been tough on them the first few weeks here just to try to get them to understand that. They just want to go out and hit live pitching off the field. Right, um, it doesn't work that way, though. <laughs> right. It's got to be pretty tough right now. You know, you're in a gym practicing. Yeah. There's only so much that you can accomplish. And mm -hmm. like you said, hitting off a tee, you know, that's going to help with your form and keeping your head down on the ball, but you really need to get outside yeah. and see some of that live pitching. Yep, exactly. And uh, velocity, we weren't hitting real good velocity last year when we were facing it, so I got the machine turned up, and they're barely touching it, but at least they're seeing something, you know. <laughs> where does the weight training and, you know, getting your hips into it and all, where does that fit in? Do you, do you feel like where you need more of that? Yeah, we, we uh, started that in November, right after Thanksgiving. I'm proud of himself. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right after Thanksgiving, we're we're in the gym lifting three days a week, and then we would hit on Friday. So it was pretty intense off season, open gyms. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, medicine balls, using that to your core, throwing your hips, you know, just all that right form definitely helps. You're, you've been inside quite a while. You're, you're, I'm sure you're looking forward to getting outside. Yeah. How's, the, how's the field coming together? The field, you know, it's brand new this year. Uh, looked great in the fall coming through and now uh you know come this this winter here the first week of practice was started february 26 it was straight sunshine and uh got outside and the field was still mushy so it wasn't quite set and i went out and cut the grass last sunday on the the new side because i let that stay a little high for the winter and I was cutting the grass and sure enough a mole popped up so the mole oh boy. <laughs> doing doing work on uh, my new sod so i have some some fix it for it in the truck right now so we're gonna go take care of them you can't use dynamite Di no dynamite i know no. i'm a big deer hunter so i thought about you know <laughs> just sitting out there with yeah. a 22 maybe hunting out yeah. there but it's a caddy shack going <laughs> save it for the coach's party shack. grill them up <laughs> so so you say you got a new field so it hasn't really adapted yet to the weather so maybe right. it's still trying to settle so yeah probably not going to be on there today uh probably not I, I, I was testing it last night when we were practicing we we're outside it was a little cold but um, so my plan is today, if we can't get on it, I'm going to stay a couple hours and work <coughs> on it, try to open it up, and that's my weekend project, get that thing ready for next week. Next week, uh, next Saturday, opening season, yep. first game, who do we have? We have Warrensburg, Latham, okay. at uh, home, at double home. header, yeah. First game's varsity game, and then uh, <coughs> a JV kind of game after that, so... It's baseball is among us, Jake. Oh, it's good. good. It's good time. It feels good. The sun is finally shining. Going to get outside, watch some baseball. Uh, what are you expecting from your team this year as far as uh, any returning kids? Uh, you might have a lot of kids stepping up this year right. uh, from the younger levels. Yeah, we have some, some young kids that are returning. Um, you know, my shortstop is a sophomore. He was a freshman last year, Noah Funk. Um, got some decent arms coming back uh, with Nate Arnold, Colton Holiday. Um, senior leader kind of Jack Eimer will be back yeah. um, he's gonna help out all over the place this year you know um, he's gonna step up and be a good utility all guy good for athletes, us. Yeah. yeah yeah so uh, like I said but we're gonna be young um, so this year is gonna be developing those younger guys and the next few years there's gonna be some real good talent coming through who are some of your assistants and uh, as far as just to kind of go on that mm -hmm. pitching's obviously a big thing in baseball how do you yep. develop those young kids into, uh, you know, pitching to where, you know, they're still young and developing right now? Right. And, you know, you're going <coughs> to expect a lot from a pitcher. Yeah. How you how you developing them? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, now that that pitch count comes out, it's right. even more important that basically the younger levels, everybody throws, you know, like the real young levels. And uh, so our freshmen coming in and <coughs> we're working on everybody throwing and, and, and they're developing you're going to have a kid that's five foot as a freshman right now and it could be six two as a senior so you never know and uh so we start with our open gyms getting those arms loose you know just 30 pitches and then just gradually work our way up and a lot of running they d they're not happy about that but you know with throwing and the arms are sore you got to work that lactic acid out so right so, so they complain about it but it, it's for the best you know 
Um, you got Tony Eckhart back. He is back this year. Yeah, finally convinced him. He he uh, retired and made a comeback. So <laughs> as I was saying, he made a retirement. He's kind of like Kiss. He's on another. Tour. Yeah, Jordan. You know. Yeah, well, he's, he's a good good pitching coach. Yeah, I mean, I feel he's always dealt with pitchers really well, being a pitcher himself. So. Yep. Uh, it's good to have him back. Um, what what are you kind of expecting offensively? Are you looking to stretch the, stretch the field a little more this year, or are are you pushing these kids with a little more small ball again? Uh, we're we're trying to hit gap to gap this year, um, you know, but we don't have any big power hitters coming back. So uh, they knew my expectations last year is small ball. If we gotta get it done, we gotta get it done. So I'm building the foundation with that. And hopefully the basket going. You know, I don't care what team you are. You're not going to hit in those first couple of weeks seeing the live pitcher. Well, I mean, you're going to hit, but it's not going to be what you're going to see in May. And um, so you got to be able to produce yeah. runs. Plus, being cold has yeah. a lot to do with it. Oh as yeah, well. it all that wind never up. stops. No, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Does wind yeah. blow out or blow in here at our fields? It's usually in in, in cross side wind. Side. We, we don't get a, a wind blowing out very much. <laughs> um, so we need to switch that up. Let's get that. I know. Let's go with the wind. I agree. <laughs> Let's get a wind farm guy out here. <laughs> check they out. just uh, you're about a year too late. They just redid the field. So they, <laughs> we can they, maneuver they around. Flip flopped them <laughs> and raise tax uh, dollars and get that moved around. Uh, you there got you go. the, the. I know an issue. Last year we talked to you, uh, concession stand or yeah. the, the crow's nest done, ready to go. It is. Um, <laughs> it's in the final stages. With, with the final, final stages. With a hesitation. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the all outside looks great and everything, but uh, we're, we're just getting the countertop put in right now. And I went to do that yesterday, actually, and it looked like somebody tried breaking in the front. Oh so we have some rails Jeez. bent. <laughs> so that's got to be replaced. And it'll be done Monday, though. Oh, right. so we got to have that done. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll have concession Sam will be back this year. Well, these That's two good. got a couple of new dogs that they're uh, guard dogs. Yeah. I'm sure if you stick them out there, they'll protect the place. Perfect. Guard dogs. <laughs> or you yeah. that is or you'll turn idea. around, they'll be snuggling with each other. <laughs> Nothing wrong with snuggling, man. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about hey, putting some trail cameras out there. I don't know. <laughs> it's not, yeah, that's, let's put that out there now. Trail cameras were put in, right? So we, it's all on film. That's right. There you so go. whoever you are, out there, people you, breaking in. <laughs> whoever did that, you step up now, the penalties will be less. And the head coach is a hunter, so just remember yes, that. That's right. Is uh hey, let's talk about the conference a minute. Yeah. Um going in, who's 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 our main competition? Because it's a tough baseball conference. It is. It, and that switch really affected us the most. Um, because going in, you know, usually you'd be playing conference games during the week in the C S eight and now it's a double header on Saturday and everybody around us are playing their conference games during the week. During so the our week. schedule is we'll play Friday fill in game to Saturday and then Monday. So you can only imagine what the pitching does to me there. Uh, so I'm going to be burnt mm. on gas um, getting through those. And, you know, wow. s sometimes we'll have we'll, one of the weeks is Chatham on a Friday, and then we'll have, uh, I think, Mount Zion, too, you know, the next day. So like, so on something like that, tough. do yeah. you – obviously, are you emphasizing the conference game where you maybe hold that better pitcher there? Or, I mean, it's maybe just I think so. depends. I, I've talked to a lot of my boys, coaches across the state, and I've been back and forth and you know, on my approach. And I, I think, yeah, I'm going to go for the conference. So try to save my guys for a conference coming in, you know, make a big show in there, and then uh, do what we can for these non-conference games. But, you know, when you, you look at those, you get regionals come around, people seed you. You know, it, it looks good if you beat a right. Chatham or something like yeah. that. But I, we're going to go for the conference. Yeah, the ultimate goal yeah. is to win the conference and everything else will play out. Right, you know? right. So, now, so back to that conference. I was going to say, how, how many pitchers deep did you say you were again? Uh, well, we're stretching Roughly. it. So with, with our uh, sophomores that are going to come help us up, you know, we got a couple that will help throw. Uh, I'm going to say probably seven or eight. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a rough weekend. Though. Yeah, Do you have that, that special utility pitcher as well where your starter goes maybe three or four innings and then you bring a guy in for the yep. fifth, maybe another guy in for the sixth, and then your closer? Is that how you kind of work yeah. as well? Yeah, we have uh, a couple guys that will do that, guys that definitely could throw strikes, throw them off. You know, we'll have Holiday's a big 6'5 lefty. Yeah. He's got length. You know, and he's throwing heat, and we'll bring a guy, you know, righty that – can throw strikes and throw those guys off a little bit and then close it. And then we have a, uh, you know, middle reliever that's a submarine guy. I'll give him a different look. You know, just throw him off maybe one time hey, through the order. Bowlers. Uh, we got one working on it. I was going to yeah. say, usually <laughs> we throw, do. throw an outfielder that can throw enough balls. <laughs> I go, well, all right, we'll use him. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nate Arnold, but he's going to be 
probably our number two pitcher this year, yeah. but he's been working on it. It looks pretty decent. Nice. All right. As, as far as the conference goes, is it? I mean, I know Mount Zion's strong in baseball. Yeah. Right? Um, Effingham has a, have a pitcher supposedly committed to Kentucky, mid-90s, about number right. four in the state. So mm-hmm. he'll be, you know, it, it's no, they're going to be, I think they're going to be more solid all the way through then the CSA. CSA. You know, CSA, you got some, the big dogs, obviously, and then yeah. got a little bit of drop-off, but it's going to be more steady. So how many of these, uh, we play on artificial turf, do you know those other schools? How many of those have it? Um, honestly, none that I know of. I'm, I'm not, I don't Which helps it. you during yeah. the season, yeah. obviously. Yeah, it, it's a big difference because every year, we, one of the first couple of weeks, we go to Sacred Heart and um, coming out there, and those kids are obviously used to it. Our kids are... Yeah on their heels a little bit you know you don't get hops but that ball gets it's there fast, a lot quicker yeah, yeah 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 that's a fast place to play on yeah that. it is they say you get a better uh bounce but yeah but it, it comes quick you. yeah i always had knew that when i was doing it oh yeah <laughs> 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 yeah the only turf you played on was the astro turf at the houston astrodome back in 1960 you know that's funny these you know what's made he doesn't even remember that <laughs> well he wasn't born yet that's what i mean he doesn't even know what you're talking about <laughs> Astro Turf. Well, Coach, I know you got a you got a practice going on today, mm-hmm. so we thank you for coming by and yeah, thanks you know, for having me. Time. Thanks for the hats. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll absolutely. Look at them. All the hats on. We look good. Supporting the Railers. <laughs> Did your uh, you want to throw some names out there? Some kids, seniors, or somebody that's doing anything? I don't want to put you on the spot because you don't have it in front of you. <laughs> I wouldn't remember names, but you know. Yeah, we got I think six or seven seniors. So Jack Eimer's back. Jordan Jacobs recovering from a a knee surgery from soccer. Um, the Marlin Twins. They play baseball, huh? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Dylan Shadone. The bookends. Yeah. yeah. They're good boys. <laughs> yep. Shadone, he'll be back throwing some innings for us. Um, we got a, new, uh, a kid returning after a year off, Michael Newhouse, um, another pitcher. Oh, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Yeah. yeah if you right. did, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell you that. Well, I'll tell you what, right. we'll have you on mid-season yeah yeah I'll try see how thing, if, well obviously if we can yeah you know, with uh Saturday if you catch your rain out early you know if you right. know it early give us a shout yeah because so yeah, we'll we'll we're always looking for people to talk besides us because <laughs> we're not very entertaining so are our listeners yeah exactly. <laughs> so uh coach thanks for stopping by yeah, thank good you good luck this season and uh we'll talk with you mid-season and then maybe again at the end absolutely sounds good all right that's coach Smania. thanks coach yep head baseball coach for your lincoln railers we're going to take commercial break so stay tuned we come back we're going to have the voice of the railers in jeff benjamin so stay tuned here in the cheap seats 96.3 fm there daisy along with josh Connick and scott kirby handling video duties here tonight jeff benjamin with you where the railers look for win number 18 on the season well inbound being watched by stanley morgan gets it into isaiah why not the hot hand? Nope. Over to Bryson. Three on the way. Yep. Down to 10. They get it to Austin. Austin flips it underneath. Williams oh, lost it. He's got it. Bobby's hold it, got hold it. it. Hold it. Bobby to Max. And Max is fouled with 4.6 to go. 4.6 to go. 17 points for Bobby. Two free throws. First one on the way. Is going to roll good. It's up. It's on the way. It's short. And the Railers are headed to Peoria. The official steps in the way. The Jumbotron shows overhead, and we are underway with state semifinal action. My very, very first game was a game that Sam Madonia couldn't make. And not being as familiar with Lincoln basketball at the time, you came up, talked about the first, you know, how the game went, and the first question I asked you after your comment was, Coach, did you ever think about maybe going to man and dropping out of the zone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. I now know that was probably maybe the worst question I could have asked. <laughs> and I think the look you gave me was like, wow. Well, next year we'll start the year off in man to man for you. It's not fair to say anything to you other than thank you for 17 years. It's been a pleasure sitting here with you after the game, for the game, or whenever. And, uh, you know, we try to teach our kids class, and uh, you've been nothing but class to, towards the coaches and the staffs. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's ever been an interview question that's ever uh, questioned the integrity of, of what we're doing and so forth. So I can't say enough about that, and uh, uh, we're going to miss you. And uh, maybe someday, maybe you'll get 
grouchy and want to come back. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for us here in Rochester. The next Lincoln broadcast will be Monday, November 19th, as part of the Eaton Electrical Round Robin Tournament. The uh, broadcast will begin at 7.30 with the uh, pregame show starting at 7. For station manager Jim Ash, our studio producer and director Paula Kodad, and for Tom Larry, this is Jeff Benjamin. Once again, the final score, Lanphier 33, Lincoln 19. Railer season ends at 25 and 6. We hope you enjoy the broadcast and know that Railer Nation did not enjoy the outcome. We certainly ask that you patronize our sponsors and say thank you for allowing us to bring you Railer basketball. From Rochester, Illinois, good evening, everyone, and Railer Nation, thank you. And with that, the man himself, Jeff Benjamin, the voice of the Lincoln Rail Splitters. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Morning. Uh, just I put that clip together. I listened to so many basketball games over the week, uh, and, and that that's just a, a smidgen of all the you know obviously the audio clips that you've had over the years. Seventeen years of broadcasting for Railer basketball. And decide, uh, you know, this is going to be your final year. Uh, yeah, this is it. Y you could tell that last clip, you know, the emotion right there where it kind of set in that, you know, that this is it. You know, this is this is the last trailer game. Obviously, it didn't end on the note that you would have liked, but, uh, you know, 17 years doing it, that's, uh, that's a long time. It is. Uh, you know, it just uh, it started out, I never would have imagined that it was going to, stretch out to being you know what it was where we plan you know our entire winter yeah. around basketball you know vacations mm -hmm. you know it you know the first uh, few years over the holidays we were at uh, up at bloomington for the state farm and then we started going to collinsville and you know and then collinsville started being you know that's where we that's our christmas vacation right you now we go down there uh, i know the uh, Tax folks in Collinsville always appreciated us being there because we always found our way to the, the stores and the malls Absolutely. and everything. But uh, yeah, it just was. Uh, it's just it's what we did, you know. And again, uh, you know, like I I said on the air and I, I said in our, my article in the Lincoln Daily News, uh, you know, my uh, my wife and daughter, they uh, suffered through all of it with me because I'm sure there were things that they wanted to do and. But they knew that you know it's a Tuesday night, it's a Friday night, it's a Saturday night. Well, we're we're going to the game. Yeah, that's what that, we're doing. You know, and that that planning started, you know, you know, two or three weeks before Thanksgiving. You know, you got Thanksgiving tournament, and mm -hmm. like you said, it's just that's how it is with me, and it's going to be for a long time where you plan your stuff, you know, around regular basketball. You knew what you're doing Thanksgiving. You knew where you're going to be during Christmas break. And, and just so on. And then even over summertime, we can't take a vacation until <laughs> end of July because of, you know, you know, camps and leagues and all that right. other stuff. It's just it's just the way it is. And, you know, and now you have a daughter moving on to college, so things change. And obviously you don't want to miss anything she's doing. And doing what you do, it's a big commitment. Yep. You know, we, you know, like I said, we don't know where she's going yet. And, uh you know, if there's something going on on a Saturday night, um, and she's participating in it, you know, it's that's yeah. where we're supposed to be. Absolutely. You know, and it wouldn't be, at least for me, I don't think it would be fair, you know, to my wife to be the only one that goes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's our only child, so it's just, you know, they they rule the roost. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in four years, like Coach Al said, when she's all graduated and you're sitting around, nothing to do, and, you know, Joe, I don't want you out of the house. Uh, well. Get out, you know, because you're driving her crazy. That's why I got here so early. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been doing this 17 years, Jeff. Can you remember, I mean, we had a little clip there, one of the first games you did. Uh, can you remember back to the older days and, you know, how did you transition? Obviously, when you first started, it was it was. Did you do any broadcasting before that, or did oh, yeah. you just jump into it? Yeah, I um, when I was at Milliken, the uh, I did uh, I was sports director there for a semester. I uh, did some of the Big Blue basketball and football okay. games. Uh, I was lucky enough for those who are old enough to remember. Uh, I was at Milliken doing football games at the same time. There was a wide receiver there named Jeff Query, uh, who ended up playing for the Packers and the Bengals, I think, like that, and he was. You know, was touted as one of the best, you know, small college players there were. He was tiny, wasn't he? Very. Yeah. And, and he wore the smallest 
pads that they would let him get away with because he he wasn't afraid of getting hurt because he didn't think he could be caught. So he figured if he was weighed down with all the you know the, the biggest shoulder pads and hip pads and whatever, so he just just figured the less I can wear, the faster I can be. And they can't catch me. Now, they did catch him a few times, and he didn't get up real fast. <laughs> and he wished he had bigger He made it, though. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But then, um, but yep, uh, worked a long time at uh, WPRC. Uh, did some uh, area games with uh, uh, the general manager who was there at the time named Dick Grog. And uh, did games at Olympia and Delavan and hartsburg Emden, And uh, found out a long time ago that uh, even back then there was not much of a cell signal trying to do a game in Delavan. I mean, it's just you know it's just hard to do. But uh, then I got away from radio for a while, got back in uh, when the station up in Atlanta opened up, and um, started doing the games that first year. And here we are, yeah. 17, 17 we years later. Well, I set down a lot of our uh, broadcasts that we do are on YouTube, and I went through. I don't know how many games of just trying to find that that those perfect clips, and it just got to a point where, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, so obviously we got the state games, right? And and so and some of the older games I was trying to get, but the audio on them was just yeah. not was not good, and that was like 2010. So anything before that, I mean, right. I don't even know if we have access to them. I don't. I don't know. You'd be surprised. I have boxes of cassettes oh, well, at home. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to play them? Do, is there any cassette players anymore these days? I've got. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple. <laughs> I've got one that's actually still in a box that I'm not going to open in the event I ever need to use it. But you need to open it, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Well, we're going to open up phone lines. Well, they're always open. Nobody to call seven three seven three seven nine one. If you want to call in and maybe tell us your favorite memory of uh, listening to one of the regular basketball games that that uh, you know Mr. Benjamin here was calling. Now, at 17 years, uh, any bloopers or anything that kind of sticks out to where you know thinking that. Uh, <sighs> Boy, I can't think of anything right offhand. I'm sure we have several. I, I mean, say. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, folks For listening may have, may have thought something. You know, I mean, I, there were times where I would do the uh, the Bobby V trick, where invariably, I mean, and you did some games with me at, at Collinsville as well. Invariably, there's always those teams that submit rosters that aren't even close to being correct, <laughs> or I never understood why they put them in alphabetical order. I mean, it just it made it difficult, but there was always that, well, who's 52? He's not in anybody's roster. If the other team's broadcast is there, um, you ask them, like, we don't know who he is. So you start pulling movie names. <laughs> you know, you start trying to figure out, because I know Bobby V has said, uh, well, they've got Yvonne Drago in it running back, and yeah. Clubber Lang is their tight end, and so you just, you just start never know. pulling names and everything like that. So, Well, we got a caller on the line right now. Go ahead, caller. Ken Tekins. <laughs> oh. Ten seconds. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's Paula. That's Paula. Yeah, and that's uh, Paula. That's the. That's yes, we have a couple memories. All right, Paula. Uh, Come I on, mean, Paula. Remember, we're well, on air, see. so keep them clean. <laughs> I think it was season before last when Josh announced them as the Rinkin Railers. <laughs> Rinkin was. That's Josh. Yeah. I know, but I could not get <laughs> the opportunity. That's to get pretty that good, though. There. I, I will tell you this. Paula is very good at what she does. Um, there are times when we'll like, well, we don't have this, we don't have that. We're not sure, you know, we've got, you know, this didn't get plugged in right, or there's something on the board, or whatever it may be, um, or they're doing a special ceremony and it's messed up our timing with the pre, whatever it is, and we always figure out a way to get it done. But I will tell you, the one person you don't want in your ear while you're supposed to be quiet and respectful. During the national anthem <laughs> is Paula, because there are some of the more inappropriate things and jokes that will come across. I don't know if she's just, oh, by the way, I just thought of a story, and it just happens to be during the national anthem, or it's, let's see if I can get them this time. Yeah, so I, I think actually, it's the latter. <laughs> the first time, it was just a fluke. I just was feeling a little full of myself and thought, well, oh, let's do this. But when I got such a great reaction, it became planned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. work. Yeah, there, there were times where sh we would get on the air, we'd get everything hooked up, and we're in, we're in break, and uh, Paul would say, I got a story for you guys. 
but I'm going to wait till the anthem. Oh, no. No, this this may not be good, so, but yeah. No, it was kind of my goal in life to see if maybe I could get you thrown out. <laughs> well, it didn't work. <laughs> Thank heaven. <laughs> yeah, 17 it years. it was a great time. Yes, it, and indeed. I just wanted to say that it has been a pleasure and an honor working with you, Jeff, all these years. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, when I say at the end of the game, you know, thanks to everybody who's involved and your name is included in there, uh, you have certainly made it uh, easier uh, knowing that if something goes haywire, that there's someone back at the station right. who's not going to... I mean, we've had moments of, uh, we don't know what's going on. And, there, and you know, it's just beyond figuring out what, what we're going to do, but... Got I it. remember one game where I played 18 minutes of commercials interspersed with technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah. That was probably Mount Zion. That's yeah, that's I, a tough place. Over yeah, there. that's. A, we've been everywhere in that building. Uh, they all just kind of swirl together in one large uh, radio nightmare. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, the, the 17 years that I did on the air uh, certainly wouldn't have been uh, as possible as it was. You know, first with, with Jim at the station and, and Paula back, you know, pushing all the right buttons and everything. Um, you know, and, you know, and Paula, of course, called in to remind me when she said 10 seconds. Uh, I guess I can rebut with her of, oops, go. <laughs> because sometimes <laughs> there's a, you know, a, oops, I forgot to let well, you know that you're supposed yeah, well to start you're, talking yeah, now. You're, you're thinking about something <laughs> else. And, she's, and that's what a lot of people don't know, that when all these broadcasts are going on, She's at the station, you know, right? Con doing all the controls and commercials right. and stuff. Where, you know, she does all the behind-the-scenes stuff. And sure. She probably, she, I know she doesn't get enough thanks, but uh, I, I you wonder, know. you know, how many phone calls she's received over the years. Where, you know, if we're at a tournament and the game before hours runs long, or if it's just a regular season game and the sophomore game goes a right. little bit long, because we say, you know, the pregame is going to be half uh -huh. an hour before the scheduled tip time. Is the game on yet? Where's the game? Wow. About is, two minutes you know, after. You know, is the game going to be on? The game <laughs> said it was supposed to, you know, and Paul's like, I've already got people calling. Where's the game? Where's it? Well, <laughs> it hasn't started yet. Yeah. <laughs> We're not ready to go. But, but yeah, it has certainly been uh, much easier to get through the 17 years. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about all the games that I've done. Paul has done the majority of the football games yeah. and all the area games, and she's there now. Seats, so yeah. there's no telling how many games, countless more so that I've done on the air, that she's actually done behind the scenes. Absolutely. But you know what I've learned? As long as she has her chocolate, she's good. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> so if she, Absolutely. If yep. she doesn't have that. You know, talking about the mistakes, I believe this is the first time both of our voices have been on the air together on purpose on purpose yeah <laughs> they've heard me a few times over the years yeah. but uh yeah that that was completely by accident <laughs> yeah it all works so, it does well, i just had to call in jeff and have my say and i guess i'll see you at walmart probably will thank you bye-bye right thanks i'll Paul. go that the uh the brains behind the operation yes you could say absolutely you absolutely know, she does i mean she's got to be at that studio when these things are going on. Well, and yeah. you know, was it was this two years ago when the Lady Railers made their march mm, yes. toward uh, state? You know, there were, uh, I think, at least one, maybe two nights yes. where the Railers were going on at the same time the Lady Railers were playing. Yeah. And I think you guys were at the Lady Railer games. Uh -huh. And so she was going back and forth having to, you know, flip switches. Right. You know, the Railers are on now. And one the ladies was online, online, one was and then on back radio, and forth. Yeah. You know, that's not just a matter of push a button and it works. <laughs> yeah. So, so all that, you know, all the technical stuff. It's uh, it's not uh, it's not as easy as everyone would think. Yeah. Now you've been doing it for 17 years. I know I've had the pleasure of doing several games with you. You've had a lot of partners over the years. Yes. Uh, started with uh, Tom. Actually, Tom came in during the second year. Okay. Uh, the first year, it was a combination of. I think I did a couple games with uh, Jeff Mayfield. Uh, did some. Uh, I think I did a majority of games with um, Greg Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, I think Greg's now. I think his. Um, they're over in Mount Pulaski area. I th I think, but uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, and then just did you know with the combination. I think even um, might have even done a couple with Darren Worth. 
So yeah. just a, you know, just a well, combination. That, that, <laughs> he was probably hard to do deal. I mean, you know, he gets a little. I know. I've I remember mm-hmm. listening to a couple broadcasts with him and you, and he just got so excited that you couldn't. It just kind of you couldn't hear anything. Yeah, Darren was. Uh, Darren never <laughs> has lacked for enthusiasm no. when it comes to sports and especially Lincoln sports. Um, and then in the second year, Tom came in and we did games, I think, for the next uh, eight or nine years. Uh, there was a couple years where there was a crossover with uh, Josh Komnick. Yeah. Uh, you've done some games with me. Uh, I did some games this year with uh, Justin Tierney. Uh, there's been a couple games through circumstance that I've had to do by myself. Uh, so, you know, it, it it it's really not that hard because you just sit and you're talking about the game. I mean, you, see, you know, yeah. I, I've said to, to people, I you know, try to talk about it on the air, that you know, as long as you remember that the most important thing that people are listening to is what you're talking about, not the fact that you're the one talking about it, it's pretty simple. <laughs> you know, if you're, 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 they're there to listen to, the game. They want to know how their team, their son, their grandson, their nephew, their neighbor, how they're doing. Doesn't you know? I don't think they put too much stock in. You know, well, they lost, but boy, Jeff and Scott sure sounded good tonight. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that. Well, I, th- I thought that's what they're. Well, <laughs> that's right. We we no, talked I, about that at MacArthur Day. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, you don't listen to what our. Clearly, I don't <laughs> like uh, officials. You're supposed to never know they were there, right? Yeah. They just blend into the game. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, w- I will tell you about officials, and that was one of the things that, with doing the games with Tom, he was an official for almost 20 years. He did uh, high school games. He did college games up in Wisconsin. And the way he <coughs> analyzed the game, I, I watched the game a little bit differently because, you know, okay, the officials are out there. They should all see everything. And I remember one of the first games we did together is there was a call, and I was like, well, how does that guy not see that? And he said, well, he's not supposed he's not, to. Yeah. You know, if, if, he, if that official is looking where he is supposed to look, he never sees that because he's not doing his job if he makes that call. Right. And so you start looking at games, and I got a really uh, much better understanding of the rules and what to look for. Uh, but, you know, talking about uh, what Paula said about getting thrown out, uh, there was one game where Tom almost did get us thrown out. We were down at Chatham, and we, he and one of the officials were discussing aggressively about a call that Tom thought was wrong. And they were, you know, it was during a timeout, and they were going back and forth. I'm sitting there going, great. Yeah. <laughs> I, Paula's got, just, I know Paula's <laughs> got a technical difficulties button, but she doesn't have, we will not bring you the second half because our announce crew got thrown out because they were arguing with the officials. So, um, yeah, but, but the rest of the game, you know, Tom was on that official. was like, well, he got that one right. Well, he got that one, but he still missed the one right before <laughs> halftime. But, uh, yeah. It was that's the one everybody remembers. The yes. one you miss. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just being a student in the game, you'll hear coaches, yeah, well, that's not your call. and. Uh, right. People are like, we mean that's not his call. He's out there. But, yeah, they're looking for, you know, specific right. areas on the court where, you know, if the guy's under the basket, you know, he's looking for the fouls, but he's also looking for three seconds, you know, other stuff like that where a lot of the typical fan, they don't realize that. Well, I remember one play up at uh, – one of the things that, you know, I think coaches and fans always appreciate from the officials is at least be where you're supposed to be. And we traveled up to Freeport one year, and it was a tight game. And Lincoln, I think, was ahead by one or two. And the ball got tipped away. The kid for Freeport tracked it down. Well, from where we were sitting, you could easily see his foot clearly not even stepped on the midcourt, stepped over it. Well, the official that was supposed to be out high never moved past past the hash mark. He never went up to see it. Coach was unhappy. The fans were unhappy. Well, of course, the kid comes down, grabs the ball, steps up to the top of the key, hits a three at the buzzer to win the game. Coach Alexander was not pleased. You know, obviously, they didn't win. It was a play that the defense should have made, but that opportunity doesn't happen without that missed call. Right. (coughs) So coach comes up. And before anybody can say anything, you know, he's already got his tie undone. He's gotten that top button done. 
And he looks at Tom, knowing that Tom had been an official, and said, your guys missed one. And Tom's like, I'm not an official anymore. I'm not an official anymore. And he's like, I know, but still, I just... And the, the one great thing about interviewing Coach Alexander, after games especially like that, and other frustrating games that have happened, is he has the ability to take all the frustration, all the angst, all the disappointment, and compartmentalize it as soon as we go on the air. Because, you know, there are things that he has said before we've gone on, and he's just frustrated, and he's talking about this and talking about that. And we come back and say, you know, we're back here on the postgame show, and Coach can go right into, you know, everything kind of, it's, it's kind of zen where it's, well, you know, we could have played better, we should have done this better. Knowing what we had talked about two minutes before never comes across that way on the air. And I right. think that's why everybody respects Coach Alexander is, you know, he understands it's not just that one play. It's not just that one shot. There's thousands of things that happen during a game. And, you know, if one of those changes, but it may not be that last one because that's what everybody's going to remember. Right. And, yeah, he, he, he's not going to throw you under the bus. He always looks for the positive. Got another caller on air. Go ahead, caller. Actually, Jeff, it's the uh, last <laughs> call of the referee, no matter what it is, that costs us the game. It, oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> it, isn't, that, isn't that it, Jeff? I, I believe so, yes. Uh, and this is Tom, who's, uh, Tom yeah. who always sat to my left. And for those that don't know, I'm a little <laughs> OCD, and every game I did, I had to sit to the right. <laughs> I, everybody that always did the games with me yeah. always sat to the I don't know why. It just started that way and, and everything. But, yes, Tom and I have uh, uh, had some uh, pretty good games, pretty good adventures. Uh, I know the year we went to uh, – the first year we went to play Moline up at uh, Wharton Fieldhouse, we weren't exactly sure where we were going. And the street address we had was a numerical street. Yeah. And we kept coming to the Avenue of the Americas. We're like, well, this can't be it. So we just kept driving around and driving around. And like, well, let's finally let's just go this way. And all of a sudden, we're starting to cross this bridge with all this water under it. I said, you know, Tom, I think if we cross this bridge, we're in Iowa. We're in Iowa. And about halfway through, it said, welcome to Iowa. <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever been to Iowa, and it was by mistake. And I was only there for like five minutes, but I blame Tom driving because oh. being a former official, he couldn't see. He didn't know what he was doing, and so it came back. So it came back. It's but, yes, fault, uh, but yes, uh, I, I will tell you that Tom and I probably discussed, and with all of our road trips to games, we probably discussed as much non-basketball as we did basketball. You know, there were games that after the game we would go from figuring out how the Railers, you know, pulled that one out to five minutes later discussing world politics and, you know, y you name it. Uh, we've probably discussed everything under the sun. Well, Tom, you got to do a few games with Jeff this year uh, as kind of a farewell tour, I guess. That, that was kind of nice, you know, getting back with your uh, your old partner. Oh, I got to tell you, it was great. It was so nice of Jim uh, and people at WLCN to let me do that. It was uh, it was great. Uh, I'm really sad that Jeff's leaving. I understand why, but uh, uh, he's got a few more years in him, so I... As he, as he will tell you, I've been badgering him on and off uh, for <laughs> last, last month and a half, two months. Uh, but boy, I'll tell you, some, some of my best experiences of my life were with Jeff. And uh, we, we did close to 300 games together. And boy, we saw some great railer teams. And uh, uh, boy, we had a great time. And uh, uh, there's just no basketball better. And I refereed in what, five states, I think, and uh, I've never run across a program as uh, as quality as uh, the Lincoln program is. Um, you just you talk to Coach Alexander for five minutes, and you see the team. You know he has total, he has discipline, but the kids respect him, and that's why uh, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to force the issue. They just respect him because uh, they know that he's right, and if they do the things that he tells them to do, they're successful. And I guess the other thing I'd say and like to say on the air is that uh, in terms of the uh, well-being of my kids, if, boy, if I, if I had kids in high school, I would transfer to the Lincoln School District so they could go to that school and in particular so they could play with uh, for Coach Alexander. 
That's yeah. That's uh, that's a nice thing to say there. And yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's that's how oh, a lot of programs are are built with stability. You know, where you have a coach that's around for years and you know implements a style and a and a respect. And you know, fortunately, Lincoln has that. Where a lot of schools, you know, they're they're a new coach year in right. year out, and there's no stability, no. You know, there's no norm, I guess. So yeah, that's that's the main thing here in Lincoln, and that's just a tradition that's was it's been carried on. Be, you know, even before Coach Al got here, and it's just well know, something that he's built on, I guess. You know, and we've seen enough games w with Tom that I, that uh, he and I have done, and uh, that others have done that you can tell pretty early on that the kids that respect their coach, like he talked about with with Coach Al. You can sense it because we've seen some games where the coach is the least in control. You know, we've seen some teams where the kid, the kid has no problem getting right in the face of a coach and yelling at him and then just walking right off the court. Oh, yeah. And, you know, doing the games for all the years and being around the Lincoln program, and Tom, I don't know if you would agree, I think as a Lincoln fan, one of the first things you think of is, that would never happen here. That, Absolutely yeah. would never yeah, happen that's here. That's the first thing. That you, like, <laughs> <laughs> and if that did happen here, yes. <laughs> it would have been handled would be quick. Won. Yeah, and I would not no, want I, to be that kid. I got to tell you, I believe the kids and uh, uh, just in general, the kids in Lincoln, I don't know why, and I, I know this is a stereotype, but boy, the kids in Lincoln just seem very respectful to me. Uh, all the time I talk to the kids and it'd be sir, yes sir and no sir, and uh, half the time they didn't know me from Adam, but uh, they would stop and talk to me. I talked to uh, Isaiah Bowers briefly after the game uh, uh, with Lampier. And he didn't know me from Adam, but he looked at me and he talked to me, and I knew he was upset. But uh, what a great kid. And uh, you see it in their grades. You see it in the way that they uh, uh, treat people. And you see it in the way they play. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 win, we, Lincoln wins because we play with discipline. And we, as you guys, as everyone knows, we beat teams continually that have better talent than we do. Um, not that our kids aren't good, but boy, we played some great teams. And the reason is, is because uh, uh, we may not turn out two or three Division One kids every year, but uh, boy, we turn out just superb basketball teams. And I think that's what the coaches are trying to accomplish. And boy, when we do, we have great results. Absolutely, yeah, you're right, and we don't always have the best best that best athletes, and sometimes we'll face those better athletes mm -hmm. like a Lamphere, and they'll get the best mm -hmm. of us. But uh, it's just the way no. it is. <laughs> it is, and it's fun. And uh, uh, you watch Central Catholic go at Orr last night, and uh, boy, you know Orr plays uh, Simeon and all these uh, uh, city teams. Boy, they we're just not prepared for that sometimes. <laughs> right. Well. <laughs> Last night's game, I'm sure you saw the the final. Yes. Uh, Southeast beats Lanfear 51-42, and they're going to be playing Marion, who has beat uh, East St. Louis in overtime. They're going to be playing them in Springfield Tuesday night for the super sectional. And you know, it just you know, even from last year, you know, you're you're just right on the verge of that leap. You know where, right. you know how it is when you're down in Peoria. It's just that extra. There's just know, that little extra. That, a lot extra. Just the the atmosphere the you know basketball players are stepping up their game well you want to step up your game because Absolutely. you're broadcasting a state you know championship and uh <laughs> and you just year in year out lincoln seems to be right there and unfortunately we face some better athletes and they you know happen to move on like landfair last year you know, we we were there we had them there you know yep. we were up by over 13 points at one time mm -hmm. i think and uh you know, they come back, win, and they make it to state, and that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And that's a, a like a program like Lincoln. That it seems like that bad taste is always there, and they just build on it year after year. And eventually, again, hopefully, before the old guy retires, he can make it back down to her up to Peoria. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Jeff, we got out in the pipeline. Yeah, Jeff. Is there? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying most winning team, but is there is there a favorite team that you remember? Just a season that went by that you're like, you know, I like these kids a lot. You know, it, it it's easy to say the team that finished second in the state, and it's not so much for the fact that they had that success, but I remember when we were in Collinsville that year, um, 
they played, even though they made it to the state championship game, they were playing some of their best basketball during that, that weekend. Yeah. And I still remember uh, there were a couple fans walking out that had Belleville East jackets on, and we were behind them with the equipment, and we're you know, waiting for them to make their way out the door. And they're just shaking their heads, and you could hear them saying, why can't we play like that? <laughs> why can't we do that? It seems so simple. And I think... You know, that team in particular, you talk about, you know, Tom mentioned we may not have Division One kids over and over and over, but we produce some of the best basketball teams. Mm-hmm. I think that's where Lincoln has had their success is it's team basketball. And that year, on any given night, anything could have happened. And, you know, you could have had Gavin have one of his nights, uh, Edward Bowlby, right. Max, uh, I remember the there was a game that was uh, weathered out on a weekend where we had to go midweek down to Chatham and play, and Joey Olden decided to hit seven threes. You know, just you just anybody at any point is going to make it a successful team. Uh, but yeah, that team, uh, you know, there were certainly some, uh, you know, some of the other teams uh, that did well. But you know, that team will always be a favorite because they. You know, they made it. You know, Coach Alexander, right. I remember when we were uh, uh, doing the uh, the post game after the night they beat Cahokia to advance to the Final Four at State, he said, well, we've got a chance to uh, get to our goal. Our goal isn't to win the state championship. Our goal is to simply have a chance by playing in the last game of the season. If you play in the last game of the season, that means you've got a shot. Yep. And that's all I'm concentrating on. And they got, they got to that there. last game and... Up until and, about and 13 we're doing minutes well. to go. Yeah. Uh, I watch well. as Like I said before, as I was going through all these videos trying to find clips, which, you know, we could have had a, a three-hour <laughs> show of just nothing but clips. But uh, that was one of the, the games that I pulled up. And as I was watching it, you just – that gut-wrenching feeling. You knew the outcome. And yeah. as we were doing so well and – there for a minute you're thinking well we have a chance we're to actually win this. Pull this thing off <laughs> you know? But, but you know you knew the outcome but yeah and there's been many of you know jake asked the question there's been many of teams that went through their you know over 17 years it's, it's hard to pick a favorite I mean, oh yeah there's there's so many moments in the season now you know there might have been a team that may have finished 13 and you know 15 or whatever it is and may not have that elite record but year in year out they're good kids they, oh, they play hard just didn't have enough talent to get uh, to that next step but uh jeff our, our time has come to an end i know we could do this for another two or three hours but uh you well i thought you said i was coming to your house later and we were just going to sit around and talk about it for two or three well hours. i think i think you have some prom dresses to go shop oh for. yeah that's right i, I forgot yeah. that if yeah. it wasn't for that you're more than welcome yeah you know, we yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. love to sit around and talk to you yeah. all day about basketball, but I think you have other commitments. Yeah, oh yes, the, and the the, one, the the two best commitments I have of being a dad and husband. Uh, that's that's what I want on my. They're, you're just there for the the checkbook. Yeah, know, pretty they much. Don't, they and don't, driving. And driving. They, don't, they don't want you. I'm the input. Uber and the ATM. Yeah. You're going for lunch. They're going <laughs> I'm for the for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Appreciate everything you've done, buddy. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, Tom. Hey, Tom, stay available because I got a feeling in about four or five years it might uh, come out of retirement. Oh, well, excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Thanks All right. You guys take care. You right, too. Bye. Well, Jeff, uh, we got to we gotta get going. Uh, thanks for taking some time. Oh, not a problem. I know Braylor basketball is not going to be the same. Uh, when people turn on 96.3, they expect to hear that, that voice that's been with the Railers for 17 years. And, uh, you know, Neil said it, you know, you've never doubted the program. You've always been positive. I've never heard a negative word come out of your mouth. And, you know, a lot of people, I'm, well, if you don't, you, they respect that. And, uh, you know, it's just been, a, you're a class act, and you yeah, did a great that. job, and you will be missed. Well, Mom and Dad did a good job. Then, yes, I guess. they did. Well, they did. before we go, i got to mention next sure. Sunday, March 18th at the Legion, uh, we're going to meet the Railers baseball program, or and it's a breakfast, 8 to 12, at 1045, player intros. We'll have more information for you next Saturday, which will probably be at...
Maybe four well, we're back there, huh? Warming up. Okay. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know where we're in where we're at week to week. Uh but Jeff, thanks for stopping sure, in today certainly. and uh enjoy the rest of uh whatever you're gonna do. Yeah. You know, you never know, you'll you may hear busy. from me again. Exactly. And hope we do. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, thanks to our sponsors for sponsoring the show. And we will talk to you next week from somewhere. Good day.